more than five years, Osama bin Laden was living under the nose of the Pakistani government, the same government that we've given nearly $20 billion in aid to over the last 10 years. Meanwhile, we got this warning from Pakistan's Prime Minister Yusuf Ghulani yesterday. Let no one draw any wrong conclusions. Any attack against Pakistan's strategic assets, whether overt or covert, will find a matching response. Mm. Kalani then tried to save face for his country by saying we shouldn't draw any, quote, wrong conclusions. Joining me now on how the U.S. should deal with Pakistan is Dr. Zudi Jasser, president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, and Ahmed Rehab, executive director of the Chicago Office of Care, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Dr. Jasser, please tell us about that. That sounded fairly, um, I don't know, angry and insightful when the Pakistani uh, foreign minister said, hey, if you come into our airspace, you may meet our, uh, our, our uh, helicopters. Well, this is all, uh, Eric, it's all posturing. They uh, got their uh, uh, hand caught and slapped. Uh, they had, uh, within their confines, either they were complicit or they, they have absolutely no control over what's going on in their own borders, and now they're trying to make up for it by posturing. And I think we need to reassess exactly the, the formula we've been using, which is you're either our friend or our foe, and it's just a binary equation, and we realize that it's much more complicated. We may have common enemies with countries like Pakistan that we may work with in the short term, but in the long term, they're harboring ideologies of political Islam and ideologies that are actually threatening our society and our anti-Western, anti-liberal democracy, and will never be our allies. So we have to work to separate countries like Saudi Arabia that foster Wahhabism, but yet we may want to work with, with, petro, with uh, uh, petroleum, et cetera. So we have to be careful to change the paradigm from friend and foe to a continuum of those ideologies that threaten us and those that may work with us with a common enemy. Mr. Rehab, we're, we're scheduled to give $3 billion in aid to Pakistan this coming year. What, is, what do you think, what does CARE think we should do about that? Well, I speak for myself. I'm not a fan of giving aid in the billions to any foreign nation, whether it's Pakistan or Egypt or Israel, who receives the largest amount of aid from the United States. I believe that we can have diplomatic relations based on mutual interests, and I believe that there is no country in the world that we need more than they need us. Um, and so at, at the end of the day, um, I would have to say that Pakistan is neither a foe nor a friend in this war on terror. I think it's been helpful in some ways. Uh, there's stuff lacking, uh, stuff to be desired still to happen uh, in terms of the relationship, in terms of going after the terrorists. Dr. And that's Jesser, what we need to put pressure on. I'm sorry, Dr. Jesser, um, what should our response be to the Pakistan government knowing that Mr. bin Laden had been sitting under their nose for five years directly next to their one of their military academies? What should we be saying to them? Well, I think we need to reassess the relationship and say, you know, we're done throwing cash at you, but we're going to have deliverables. We're going to be involved in partnerships. If you look, the Bush administration developed Millennium accounts for countries in Africa where we had pay-as-you-go criteria, where we said, you know what, there's going to be deliverables. I think it would be wrong to turn isolationist because those countries are already headed in the wrong direction towards Islamism, towards theocracy, which will create ideas that are against the West and continue to propagate conspiracy theories and a population that doesn't believe in working with us. So if we're going to work with them, we need to help them build institutions, work hand in See, hand as, as partnerships listen, that are measurable. Go ahead, sir. As I, as I, as I listen to Zuhdi Jasser speak here, um, he's one of those far-right individuals who's trying to make this war against Al-Qaeda into a larger How about you stick to the subject, Ahmed, and, and talk to substance? That, that is the subject, Zuhdi, because that's exactly what you're trying to do here, and I have to call you out on it. And the fact is, you've been a sock puppet for the axis of Islamophobia in this country. <laughs> more, more personal attacks you, instead of substance, Everybody substance, Everybody supports you, hates Islam for a reason. Look, oh my gosh, we this is wonderful. Oh, oh, you think it's about states of America. Islam, Mr. We're not out to guys, 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 We're out to fight all the guys, Muslim terrorists. Guys, 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 there is nothing more pro-Islamic or pro-Muslim, Ahmed, than those that want to defeat theocracy. However, you and the and your associates that believe in theocracy want to push theocracy down the throat of Muslims all over the world through the Brotherhood Movement and other aspects of political Islam. And you want to say that you represent... Right, right, guys, you we have to leave it here. Fellas, we have to leave it here. We're running out of time. Like right. Egypt, we'll bring you back for another segment. Hang in there. Are we sending a mixed message? Just cut the mic off. Are we sending a mixed message when we won't tolerate waterboarding, but will kill an un unarmed bin Laden. We'll talk more about enhanced interrogation techniques next.
Spirited discussion here about our relationship with Pakistan. I'm back with Dr. Zudi Jasser, president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and Ahmed Rehab, executive, executive director of the Chicago Office of Care. Guys, uh, let's turn our, our talk about the uh, enhanced interrogation techniques that were used on uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed that ultimately led to the kill, capture and kill of uh, Osama bin Laden. Dr. Jasser, um, why not use all forms of uh, interrogation if it leads to the capture of some, some of the most dangerous people in the world? Well, I think that's a great question. And this democracy and transparency, we talk about these things. And I think we need to look at what we got as a result of waterboarding and the fact that we can't be sanctimonious and say that we will not use any forms of coercion. I mean, what are we going to use? Harsh language? At the end of the day, that we have to be transparent. It doesn't mean we can use all forms. It doesn't mean we turn into thuggish societies like Syria that is now using uh, uh, torture to get Facebook passwords. We're getting data that was used to capture the most wanted criminal in society. And I think ultimately we need to reassess that sanctimonious blanket. We won't use torture and realize that, you know, war is messy and there may be times in which we have to use things that transparently we say are part of the the coercion we need to do. Now, uh, Mr. Rehab, Chris Wallace on Fox News Sunday had a great question. He asked uh, Mr. Donilon, um, you know, if, we're, if it's okay to shoot someone in the eye and kill him, an unarmed man, is it, why is it not okay to waterboard him? Where is care on waterboarding and the capture and kill of Osama bin Laden? Can you, can you square those two? Look, the difference between us and those whom we fight in the form of Al Qaeda and other militant radical groups is that we are a nation of values. We're a nation of laws. And in the fight to maintain the upper hand, we can't lose our souls, we can't lose our principles and our values that make us worth fighting for. At the end of the day, torture is torture. By any other name, it's still torture. And the problem with that is it's been proven time and again that it does not provide accurate information. It has led us into a war in Iraq that was completely misguided, that wasted a lot of money and spent right, a lot on, of lives. Hang on, sir. Uh, I, I, based I apologize. On false information obtained through torture. Before I lose a segment here, Dr. Jasser, uh, the, the head of the CIA, Leon Panetta, point blank said, Waterboarding was one of the techniques used, and it, it aided in the capture of bin Laden. Uh, any questions? No, I mean, I think ultimately we have to realize that the Judeo-Christian and, and in Islam, we believe that there's just war. And if you're going to, unless you're a pacifist, you have to believe that ultimately targeting individuals a morality is going to win over evil by the use of some force and coercion as transparently necessary. We're transparent with it, and I think it was moral. We got bin Laden with it, and ultimately we just have to be transparent and clear about it. But to say that we're not going to use it at all is naive as the... Uh, but, but as uh, very Jews, quickly, sir, Muslims, very, very quickly. Believe, as, Jews, as Jews, Christians, and Muslims, we also believe in the honorable fight. We all also right. believe in fighting um, in a way that is not... Absolutely. We have to leave it there, Dr. Judy, Judy Jasser and, uh, and Mr. Ahmed Rehab from CARE. Thank you, guys. We'll be Thank right you. back.